Hey everyone, this is my new chair. My husband got it for me for my birthday, which was on October 3rd. <laughs> Look how pretty it is, oh my god. <laughs> the cats are already crazy. So today I'm collabing with Bokeh, who is an artist here on YouTube, and I've been watching her videos for years. So when she reached out to collab, I was like, yes, I love your art, let's collab. She does beautiful, realistic artwork, but like with a neat twist, it's just so interesting. I love watching her videos. She works a lot in pencil and pastel, and it's just gorgeous, gorgeous work, and she's so skilled, you have to check her out. So what we're doing today is an art supply swap. So we thought we'd mail each other some art supplies and then create art with those art supplies. And we set a $50 limit, which is very difficult to stick to. I was struggling to find actual good artist quality stuff. So if you wanna see what I got her, definitely watch her video, link will be down below and see what she creates with my supplies. The box she sent me is bigger than the one I sent her, so hopefully this is like a fair trade. I'm like, oh my God, what if she went all out and then my package is crappy in comparison? <laughs> anyway, let's dive into this. Cutting towards yourself, that's safe, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, lots of bubble wrap. Oh my goodness. Is this like a gift box? This is fancy. Oh, mine was not that fancy. Oh wow, this is gorgeous. Ah! I already feel like mine was inadequate. <laughs> is this a print? <gasps> I'm gonna cut the beautiful ribbon. Ah. Print freebie for Bailey. Ooh. Oh, that's gorgeous with the gold on it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wow, this is a really high quality art print. Wow, that is gorgeous. Hand embellished with 22 karat leaf gold. I'm feeling spoiled already. On the front here it says, a box for Bailey. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Everything's individually wrapped. <gasps> Little candies. I probably should have sent some Canadian candy. She's from Sweden, so she was thinking ahead. I was not. I did send her some like, little freebie things, but not candy. Look at all this. Oh, there's more. Kiki, it looks like you. These look good. Oh my. Okay. Okay. Wow. She. I mean, like, I could see this a little bit. I didn't realize this was me. Oh my God, she went all out. Look at this, <laughs> that's me. Oh, and the envelope is the card. Hope you will like the material I picked out for you. I think most of the material is self-explanatory and I will not spoil anything here on what's in this box. I just wanted to mention that the little porcelain figure is a brush rest. So it is some kind of art supply, not just a random porcelain thing in a box. Sorry for going a bit over budget. I blame alcohol for that. <laughs> Don't drink and shop as the wise ones say. <laughs> Hugs Mia. Also, congratulations on hitting 1 million subs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, this is all so fancy. I feel like I need to send her like another little extra something. <laughs> YOLO! Original since 1954. Okay, starting with this thingy. <laughs> when she says she went a little over budget, like how much is a little? <laughs> we have some Caran d'Ache pencils. Museum Aquarelle. <gasps> water, they're watercolor pencils. Oh, I was just thinking recently when I was doing my doll face up, I was like, I don't have any watercolor pencils. Hmm? For me, I struggled because I didn't want to get things that she uses all the time in her videos. Like I didn't want to get pastels or pencils, so it was so hard. It's like, oh, I just want to pick out all the pencils, but she's trying to like give her things she doesn't normally use. <laughs> That's in this one. Oh, we have a blue pencil for sketching. Oh no, it's not actually blue, it's just the outside's blue. It's a graphite pencil. I blew myself. <laughs> Ah, oh, Arrested Development. <laughs> oh, we have two little tubes of paint. 
Cascade Green, and Rose of Ultramarine. These are Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolors. <laughs> and, oh, Pearl Colors. For best results, add water, wait three minutes. Look at that beautiful teal color. Because oh, I have that palette right there, but I don't have teal. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And what? Drawing graphite putty? I have never heard of this. I'm going to have to Google this and figure out how you're supposed to use it. What the heck? That's cool. It feels really cold, too. Ooh. Now this little guy. <gasps> Holbein gouache. They're so cute! Oh my goodness. There's such a variety here. Oh my gosh. What am I gonna make? Oh. <gasps> a little palette! I don't have one like this! I don't have a little flower palette. Yes! Cute! Maybe this is that porcelain thing she mentioned. Yes! Oh, it's a kitty! <gasps> Cute! Oh, my baby. This one can be you, and this one can be Midna. Then, this. <gasps> Watercolor book. So this is what I will be painting in then. Ooh, fancy. I love the texture of the cover. This is what I'm gonna be working in. Wow, oh my God. Oh. If you go watch her video, you're gonna think my box is so crappy compared to all this. <laughs> so I'm an idiot and realized I missed something in the package. So let me just insert this clip here. <gasps> Paintbrushes, ooh. Ooh, I like the thick boy. Ooh, these are very fancy. All right, now I have some brushes to use with my paints. Okay, I guess it's time to, one, research what the heck this graphite putty is, and two, start on the art. Mm -hmm. What the heck? Whoa, looks like I'm about to get messy. <laughs> So for this video, I thought it'd be fun to do a bunch of smaller pieces of art because the sketchbook is fairly small and there's such a huge range of different art supplies that I got and I didn't really know how to include everything into one drawing, especially with this graphite here. It's just so weird to work with and it's not very precise, like you can make it into a bit of a fine tip, but it's something that works better on a larger canvas. And so I did use it in this video, but I think I'm gonna use it again in a separate video and maybe do an entire video just on the graphite. I think that'd be very interesting and I'll see what I can come up with. But for this video, I pretty much just wet it so it was nice and black and smeared it onto the paper so it'd make a nice black background. And then I wasn't too sure what I was going to do with it, so I ended up sketching a few ideas on my iPad just in Procreate. And I didn't really go with everything. I kind of used that background idea, and I did do the plant thing that was on the dark background. That one I did do. It's nothing fancy. It's just like a little warm-up, I guess, to get myself going in this video. And just something to do with the graphite and the gouache. I did use the gouache later on, but I knew I wouldn't be using it at its full opacity. I knew I was gonna water it down to be a little closer to watercolors. So this was my opportunity to use it at its normal state. I did have to add a bit of water though to make it spread more easily. It's kind of neat. If you use gouache without watering it down much, it has a grainy texture when you use textured paper. You can just see all the little grooves and bumps and it has a chalky kind of look. I don't really know what all to say about this part because honestly it's not that exciting. Like I said, just a little warm up. It's something that could be fine tuned and redone, possibly digitally to become some kind of repeating pattern. But yeah, like I said, just, just a little warm up there. 
And some nice close-up real-time shots. Ooh, yes. Oh, adding lines to the leaves. Oof. I'm not very good at using gouache. I bought some once and I used it, I think, two times and haven't touched it since other than just using white gouache to add highlights and details to things. Gouache is just not my thing. Now on to the next drawings. The doodles on my iPad were not really related to this except for the backgrounds like I mentioned. I just suddenly had the urge to draw SpongeBob characters but in a very artsy kind of style where there's lots of scribbles and textures and things and I had so much fun with this. I know I'm probably gonna get some backlash for doing simple drawings, but I guess that's kind of the trade-off, like multiple simple drawings instead of one big fancy thing. I felt like this is what worked best with the paper and just, I had a blast with doing it this way, like with the watercolor pencils. I've used watercolor pencils in the past, but it was just this little set that I had when I was a kid. It was maybe like eight to 10 colors and I haven't had watercolor pencils since and man, I really, really want some now because this was so fun and I had fun adding the textures and just wetting the, the what do you call it, the lead I guess, <laughs> watering it down and just spreading it and I don't know, it was just very very fun. I like how you can color in fine areas with it and you don't have to worry about squeezing paint out of a tube or even using just like a little pan. You just color and then wet it, it's, it's magical and it's fun. And I tried using a bunch of different colors everywhere. I did have a limited color palette to choose from for the pencils. And yes, you can layer them and kind of mix them that way. But that's what made it fun is because when you have less colors to work with, you get more creative and you layer colors that you maybe otherwise wouldn't have thought to layer. And so it makes it more colorful and interesting. And so I was purposely adding a little bit of everything everywhere almost like look at his outlines how many different colors are in that and look how scratchy I made it it's just it's very interesting and another note with these little drawings is they were never fully completed by the time I moved on to the next one at first I thought Spongebob was completed but then I went back later and added some watered-down yellow gouache to his body just because that yellow pencil was so light and once I started on Squidward he was looking a lot darker so then I went back and added some yellow to Spongebob which you'll see later and then also with Squidward, his background was kind of wet, so I moved on to Patrick, then came back. So you'll, you'll see some back and forth here. I feel like this art is in such contrast to Bokeh's art because her stuff is just so detailed and nicely rendered and realistic. And I'm almost kind of the opposite. Like sure, sometimes my art's detailed, but I'm kind of more of the simple cartoony kind of gal. So if you're coming from her channel and you're like, what the heck is this girl drawing? <laughs> We are two totally different art styles, but I hope you enjoy this video anyway. <laughs> I know her video is going to be something crazy and spectacular, like her art's just always top notch. I haven't seen what she's done yet, but I know it's just going to like blow everyone out of the water because, you know, I don't know. It's, it's just much more, I guess, impressive than my art. I go for more illustrative stuff and hers is, like I said, more realistic. <laughs> With Squidward here, I was loving the way the colors were going down. Once I started wetting it, I was like, oh baby, this is really nice because I had the light green and the, it's like a light turquoise kind of color, kind of a mint green. And then there was a darker blue. And so I had all three of those in there and it was looking so nice. And that's why I was like, oh, I need to go back and add more to SpongeBob. So I think Squidward is my favorite in terms of the colors on his face. But I think I still like the SpongeBob one maybe the best overall in terms of the textures and colors and how the lines turned out. Here I'm using that yellow gouache in the background too just because it's nice and bright. Like I said, the pencil was a very pale yellow so I thought why not water down some gouache and use it as watercolor because that is something you can do with gouache. And here I'm just letting Squidward dry and starting on Patrick and just sketching them out. He's probably the most boring of all of them out of my opinion, or out of my opinion, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> but I still like it. I think it's really fun having all three like a series where they're all done the same way. Just this weird neutral expression and similar type of background, just changing up the colors. It's it's actually very fun. Let me know if you would like more videos kind of like this where it's just multiple small drawings but it's like a little series and they all go together. I mean I've done videos where I have multiple pieces of art and I'm like the drawing subscribers art video things like that but 
having it be a little series is just very satisfying to look at at the end. <laughs> Plus, you know what you're doing by the time you're done the first one. It's like, okay, now I know how to do the second one. I figured out what it is exactly I'm doing. So it was very enjoyable. I also just had fun with how loose it was. Just letting the watercolor flow, doing the rough, sketchy outlines. I'm probably sounding like a broken record, but I just, I had so much fun with this. Honestly, I don't really care if I get backlash in terms of how simple the, the drawings are. I just, ugh, I'm in love. Personally, I think it's some of my more interesting art as of late. I just, I don't know, it's, it's different than what I usually do. It's different than my typical Copic speed paint. Also, I just really, really like SpongeBob, so it was fun to draw some SpongeBob characters. <laughs> I did end up adding some of that turquoise pearl paint at the very end. I didn't really know how to incorporate it into this. I tried adding it to SpongeBob's background at one point, but it was just looking muddy and dark gray, which was weird. So I just decided to skip out on it, except in their eyes. I added some to SpongeBob's eyes and to Patrick's. With Squidward's, it didn't really work because he has red uh, pupils. So I left it out on Squidward, but I thought it looked kind of neat on the other two. So this is just a quick recap of the drawings I did in this video. I hope you found it interesting. Let me know which one's your fave. <laughs> and do not forget to check out Bokeh's video. I'll have a link down below to her video. And honestly, like her art is so good. Go check out her stuff if it's the kind of thing you're into, consider subscribing to her channel. She totally deserves it. Also, huge thank you to Bokeh for sending me this amazing, amazing, beautiful package. She really went above and beyond and I really appreciate it. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. And don't forget, I'm gonna be at Fan Expo next weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Fan Expo Vancouver the 12th to the 14th of October. Come and see me, come to my table, say hi. Yes, okay, <laughs> see you guys.